Okay, so this is my chrome ray generator. Uh, you can see that I've got two stacks of magnets on either side here, and I'm just gonna zoom in there so you guys can see this. So, either side we've got opposing, as you can see down here, there's a north field, up here there's a south field, and then on the other side, north field, south field. So it's a, it's a uh, in series field here. So north, south, south, north, in series. And then down in here we have the rotor with the windings on it. So there's two rotors here. You can see one down here, one up here. And they have coil wrapped around it or a mag wire wrapped around in a coil on either side. So there's four coils, one, two, three, four and they are wrapped in series, so uh, this way, and then up, and then the opposite way across. If you're looking from the same side, they'd be opposing one's counterclockwise and one's clockwise. So, and then down here, there are brushes and a commutator, so a piece of copper that allow you to take power off of it as it's spinning. And the central shaft is non-ferrous, the core of the coils is ferrous and then down here there's ferrous blocks it's iron or mild steel so it allows the flux the magnetic flux lines to go all the way through like a rectangle or square and then there's no continuity of the flux lines through the center shaft because that's non-ferrous non-magnetic conducting material uh, so i'm going to fire it up here and Basically, I'm doing this for my friends who are also into building chrome rays. We're trying to um, refine some of the details here to get it producing more power. And currently this one is not producing um, the amount of power that I want, nor is it producing the correct um, effects or speeding up when I short it out. But I believe that's due just to using too big of gauge of wire and not enough windings. I think there needs to be more um, more windings and a smaller gauge of wire to increase the voltage. I believe this machine works on voltage more so than amperage to get the desired effects. So that's what we're going to do next, but I just want to make this video first to show you where I'm at and uh, what I'm planning on doing here. So if we fire this guy up here, we can see producing about uh, 5 volts at the moment on the output, so not enough, but again that's because I'm using the, I don't have a lot of windings on there. Right now this RPM we've got uh, 3 volts, 3 volts DC on the output. flywheel on it to stop the vibration and the shaft is also bent a little bit so there's quite a bit of vibration coming off of this. Also these magnetic stacks are pretty beefy and they have a lot of um, lunk as this goes by here and the, um, the magnets catch the steel as it goes by so it's pretty lunky but overall that's my device. Um, it's currently running at about 3 to 5 volts DC on the output the RPM is anywhere, I don't have um, a tachometer, but it's anywhere from say 300 RPM up to a thousand, maybe a little over a thousand. And from here we're gonna rewrap the coils with smaller gauge wire, many more windings. I'm going to get a new motor and redo the shaft over the next uh, few months and year. I'm gonna get a capstone project at my local university with the engineering students there to work on this over the coming winter and refine this and a few other versions of it with a flywheel. That'll uh, give it a bit more inertia and stop that clunking. 
And uh, other than that, I'm, I'm happy with the design. It's got lots of room for improvement and modifications. Um, it's pretty it's pretty sturdy and well done. It was all done on a CNC water jet machine and the lathe. So that's my Cromery converter and I appreciate you guys watching.